Listening to Tago Mago for the first time is one of the best experiences one could have in their entire lifetime. Um, so today we're listening to Tago Mago by Can. Uh, I posted this in the poll for which album I should listen to in 1971. And you guys said this album. So we're checking it out today. Uh, I think it's Prague. I want to say Prague. I've done some Prague reviews on this channel. I'm not a complete stranger, but I'm still not well you know, versed. I most I mostly just know King Crimson. So yeah, uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. Uh, we're gonna go into these with our honest thoughts and opinions. I'm not an expert on the genre, so don't kill me. And uh, yeah, we're gonna pick our favorites, favorite moments, try to analyze what this album is about, potentially, and that's it. Uh, if you want to check out any Can albums in the future, feel free to let me know, or any other artist. I love this album cover, let me, let me tell you that. I love the colors. Usually, I don't like orange. But I'm like an orange. Decent album length. Let's get into track number one, which is Paper House. I'm hearing birds. Oh my god. I'm loving this rhythm. This is this is crazy bro, I'm not gonna lie. Oh my god. 
Um, that's that transition's crazy. Kind of, I'm kind of blown away right now. I think I think the lyrics were just about you know mentally trying to control your, your reality and kind of you know just letting things go. It definitely resembles you know the mess of the album cover. I think the album cover is just some like maybe some person in the brain, you know, and it's just a bunch of crazy shit going down in the brain maybe that you know the song can kind of represent that um the guitars are probably my favorite part the whole, the whole track basically felt like a solo uh, i can't believe the guitars sounded good with his vocals sounded good with the drums i can't like the mix there was so much going on in there but it didn't sound flooded at all let's get into track number two which is mushroom so The bass pan to the right? That's kind of crazy. Bro, that guitar coming in, that guitar coming in on the back is crazy, bro. So it seems like he may have taken some shrooms and now he's kind of tweaking out a little bit. Maybe he's having a little bit of a out of body experience. He's recalling some memories of him being, you know, a little kid, you know, being born and then him dying uh, maybe at an old age. So he's kind of just going insane right now. Um, the guitar in the background definitely sounds like he's a downward spiral. So I love that song. I love the rhythm. I think I like that song more than the first song, actually, even though I think thought it was genuinely terrifying. I can't I can't tell you any song I have ever heard. And I'm being serious. I cannot tell you any song I've ever heard with the bass not in the middle of the mix. Huh. It's like waves, like, you know. I wonder what he's saying. I wonder what he's saying. This is trippy.
I got no analyzation for that. I don't know what the fuck that was about. Oh my god. I love getting three different verses at different things. We got we got, we got the first verse in reverse, the second one in English, and the third one in uh, another language. It sounded Asian. I don't know. So I mean, this this is just continuously growing on me. I love the groove of that whole entire song. Um, yeah, guitar player was spazzing on that. And oh my god, I, I, I don't know what he's talking about at all. I was trying to look. I was trying to read those lyrics. And man, I, it was just. Let's get into the first of these next four long songs, which is, Halle. Lua? I love what it's doing, bro. It's like going back and forth. Oh my god. I like the piano. God, I already know. I already know that back in the day, they probably used to get high as fuck to this song. And that shit must have felt like an eternity.
like i touched every emotion that I've, I've ever had right there um my favorite part of the song was towards the end towards the 15 16 minute mark where you know everything just kind of started to spiral and get out of hand i was not expecting that i thought we were chilling on this little trip that we have and then you know shit just kind of got wild um he's looking for his brother uh that was kind of the equivalent of you know making your way through the desert you know, through, through like the deserts in egypt and you got to get somewhere you know it's kind of like walking through a long desert you know, and, I, and I've listened to longer songs in 18 minutes, but that really felt like a haul. I was looking at the place with this album. I think that maybe it's not that popular due to the fact that maybe it's the vocals. Maybe the vocals, because the vocals are pretty compressed and raw compared to some other projects like King Crimson, you know, and like in the court, Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon. Um, I feel like the those vocals tend to be a lot more pronounced in the mix than these ones. I don't know if that plays a role in this one's popularity as, as to why the other two are kind of more mainstream i don't know maybe that's a reason i'm not entirely sure or maybe it's just the long songs <laughs> but yeah um let's get into this next one omgen omgen <laughs> I'm in like a jungle and I'm lost. Yes. Oh my god. Kind of an ominous bass. Are you sure you all want me to react to this? Because I think I'm going to disassociate. I think I'm going to. Chill. These guys have tried drugs. These guys have tried drugs, I'm sure of it. Oh. Weaking out right now, bro. The fuck is happening? Like if a really primitive alien civilization made music, I think this would oh. I'll just shut the fuck up. What an absolute treat, guys. <laughs> That's me on the... <laughs> me on the brink of orgasm. I'm actually enjoying myself a lot. I kind of like this kind of music, to be honest. I'm a, I'm a little weird. How? How are they doing this?
loud, guys. This is loud. is at three. Basically, have you ever seen a 2001 Space Odyssey? Have you ever seen that? It kind of reminded me of the thing that the big black square would make. Like those kind of sounds. Like if that, if that thing made a, made a song, you know, from, from way back in the day. This sounds so primitive. I love those kind of tracks. I love the kind of chaos and seeing where it goes. And I feel like I was just in so many different timelines. And I love albums that do that. I love albums that just kind of take a, you know, left turn out of nowhere and just go into that kind of sound. So I'm I'm satisfied. I love shit like that. Uh, let's get into track number six, which is the final long song. Um, Pecking O. Those keys in that rhythm came out of fucking nowhere. This sounds incorrect. <laughs> this sounds incorrect. Me at the gibberish auction.
that was the most unhinged shit I ever heard. I swear to God, that was the most unhinged shit I've ever heard. I, I think I ever will hear. I don't know if I'll ever hear a song like that again. That took years off my life. That took years off my. It was creative. I'll give it that. It was creative. What what, what do I say though? Like what, what what? How am I supposed to analyze something like that? I remember, I remember when I listened to um that one song off um that Aphex Twin album. It's like the really high pitched. I thought I thought that was the craziest production I ever heard. I thought soundtracks for the blind was some of the craziest shit I ever heard. I thought some of Death Group shit was some of the craziest stuff I ever heard. This just took the cake. Track number seven, the last one is Bring Me Coffee or Tea. That sounds nice. I like coffee or tea. What song is next? I don't even know what the fuck. Captain Beefheart and his magic band. What is that? I think overall, right? Actually, no, let's not talk about... First of all, that track. I like that track a lot. I think he's... I think we ended on an optimistic note for his little uh, his little episode that he's going through. He says, I'm again. I don't know what the, He's referring to himself. He's like, yes, I'm again. What does that even mean? Like, what are you talking about? But, you know, I'm on board. Uh, that that was that was actually sonically pleasing to my ears. I'm a fan of that. I'm a fan of that. Uh, he got his coffee, he got his tea, and now he's all relaxed. He's in a good mood. And now he's happy. So, I think I think here's the thing. Here's the thing. I think that this would have been really life changing, if I was on some sort of ayahuasca, DMT, shroom type of thing. This would this would either be. This would either be the best album I ever heard in that case or the worst album I ever heard in that case because I think I would hallucinate some weird shit. I definitely don't believe that this album was made for, you know, for someone to sit in a couch indoors uh, just to ponder about the sounds about it. I think I'm listening to this very wrong. Uh, I think maybe I should have, you know, done a couple couple grams or a couple micro doses. I, I think that that would have changed my mind completely. But yeah, I'm, I'm completely exhausted out of this. Um... But this this was fun.
this is a fun time. I think I would do it again. I think I would re-listen to this. Of course, I'm going to before I do the ranking video. But God, this was this was just a, an intense moment for me, guys. I'm not gonna lie. But yeah, that's what I gotta say right now, just regarding Can. Uh, if, if you want to check out any of their other two albums, uh, they have like two more albums that are like pretty critically acclaimed from what I saw. So yeah, thank you so much for checking this video out. I'm gonna have that 1972 poll out very soon. So thank you for being here, and I will check you out later.